folks, Pastor Guy here at Country Cowboy Church, gathering. So glad that you're gathering with me here this evening. Got a couple songs and a little message out of the Bible to share with you. This kind of sets things up for what some people refer to as Holy Week, kind of the last week that Jesus spent on this earth anyway. We've got a few things to talk about. But anyway, I'm glad you're with me. I'm standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises I cannot fall Listening every moment in spirit's call Resting in my Savior is my all and all Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of Christ my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Oh, I'm standing, standing, standing on the promises of Christ my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. I hope you are too. Like I said, he's never told me something that wasn't absolutely true. Hey, I got another one just because... Well, I love Jesus. Here's a couple songs that say how I love Jesus. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name. On earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me of the Savior's love who died set me free it tells me of his precious blood the sinner's perfect plea oh how I love Jesus oh how I love Jesus Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me, because he first loved me. I love you, and I lift my voice. To worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear, yes, I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Feel like.
like saying amen after that. So be it. Heavenly Father, thanks for being here with us today. Thanks that you loved us so much that you taught us how we should love ourselves and others. Thanks for paying the ultimate price for our sins by your death and your blood shed on the cross. And thank you for that promise of being with you in heaven. It's your resurrection that tells us that. Thanks for going ahead of us and preparing that special place where we can spend eternity with you. Bless this little service here this evening, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, hey, let's get to the Bible, because you know I like to see what the Bible says. And I kind of said this is one of my favorite things to do as far as one of the stories in the Bible, because we as country folk, we like our animals, etc. And it talks about an animal here in a very special way. And those of you that know little animals, you know they got a mind of their own. That's what makes this story so special. So this, I'm going to take this one out of Mark. It has it in all three Gospels, but I like this one in Mark, so that's what I'm going to share with you. It's Mark 11. It goes like this. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you're doing this, tell them the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. Now you all know, little colt got a mind of its own. It's never been ridden. That's one thing that's kind of miraculous about this story. Let me continue. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at the doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus, they threw their cloaks over it. He sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead, and those who followed, shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest. I can't believe all this excitement that was going on. But here's the thing. We have a colt that's never been ridden. What did Jesus sit on? And with all those people shouting, I think it would scare the you-know-what out of that little colt. He'd want to take off. But did he? No. Jesus came into this world humbly. He rode in to Jerusalem, and they were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They were showing honor and respect for Jesus as their true king. And he rode in proudly on a colt that had never been ridden. A burrow, in fact. Donkeys, they're pretty stubborn. Jesus commanded that little horse, that little colt, to do what he needed him to do. I don't know too many horses, even good riders will tell you, that can go into a crowd like that with palm branches floating around and people yelling and shouting and screaming. It takes a pretty good calm horse to stay smooth and just kind of do its thing the way it's supposed to. But Jesus did this with an untrained animal. Why? Because he has authority over them. Okay? Anyway, let's continue. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not of the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. 
On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him. For they feared him, because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, they went out of the city. In the morning as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. People re Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Jesus said, have faith in God. I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so that your Father in heaven may also forgive you of your sins. This is the part that's important. Didn't Jesus teach us to pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And it also says, forgive as you would like to be forgiven. Jesus says this again, if you hold any grudge for one of your brothers or sisters, forgive them. Release yourself from that so that God may bless you. Because it says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive me the way I forgive my brothers and sisters. That's the key point. Now, why is this all happening, all this stuff going on? Jesus is setting things up for what he's going to do at the end of the week when he dies on the cross to save you from your sin and to save me from my sin. He's going to take a whooping. They're going to beat him up so they say he was unrecognizable. And he could have dismissed himself, I don't want to do this. But he did it because he was obedient to his Father in heaven. He knew what his task was here on earth. But he wanted us to know that we need to forgive. And by doing so, we release ourselves of that burden. And he will forgive us of every and anything. But you gotta do the same thing for your brother and sister. Why not? It releases you from that burden. It allows the Father, through the Son and the Holy Spirit, to bless your socks off. That's how much He loves us. So let's think about it as we go about this week, the different things that are going to happen, the different thoughts that we're going to have. I think it's a joyous week. What's sad is we lose Jesus here on earth. But what's amazing is, he kept his promise. He fulfilled what he came here to do. And he blessed us because of it. I hope you take that into consideration. I was in China three years ago for Easter. And it was tough because they spent that whole week mourning and weeping and praying. And it wasn't this happy excitedness that I feel that we kind of do in this part of the world. But look at Jesus rose from the dead. He did exactly what he said. Sure, he died a horrible death. But he even said he has to go. His hour had come. We should rejoice that Jesus kept his promise. He wants to help you keep yours. He wants to give you the fullness of life. Won't you let him? 
Take them into your heart. Put them right here. Say, Lord, you are my Lord and Savior. I will follow you the best of my ability. And yeah, we're going to stumble. We're not perfect. Only Jesus has been perfect. Forgive your brothers and sisters. And let God forgive you. Amen? Amen. Got another song I want to kind of step it up here a little bit talking about my sins being forgiven kind of releases me it makes me feel pretty good I hope it makes you feel good too here's a song I like to sing I've been humbled by the Lord the power of his love and I stumble and I fall and he's been there to pick me up the face of all temptation been the strength to stand my friend that in his sweet salvation I know I'm pouring down cause I'm a man my I've got no wings to fly, but I'll make it up to heaven one step at a time. I've cried tears and jealous song. I have tasted bitter wine. I've lost faith in my tomorrow, and I've cursed the hands of time. I've wandered through the darkness, surrendered to my doubts. Been so close to hell that I could hear the devil shout. I'm a man, not an angel. I've got no wings to fly, but I'll make it up to heaven one step at a time. And when all the clouds have parted and I'll have face to face with death, I will feel the darkness and the grass from my last breath. I'll climb that mighty stairway that leads to heaven's gate. The surrender of my soul will be my final leap of faith. Cause I'm a man, not an angel. I've got no wings to fly. But I'll make it up to heaven. One step at a time. Said I'm a man, I'm not an angel. Oh, I've got no wings to fly. But I'll make it. Yes, one step at a time. Yes, one step at a time. Oh, one step back. said it before and I'll be saying it again. You can go a million miles going the wrong direction. It takes one step to turn your life around and be in the arms of Jesus who's waiting there for you. It's his blood on the cross that saves you. And all he says is recognize who I am. Believe who I am. Let me into your heart and I can take care of you. Let Jesus take care and until then, let's pray. We need to pray about it. And when we pray about it, we need to take the time to listen as well. But prayer is a good thing. Here's a song about it. It goes like this. Tell the answer. Come on, you keep praying. Keep praying. Oh, keep praying. Tell the answer. Come on, you keep praying. Keep praying till the answer comes. And if you knock one time, there's no answer. Well, don't turn away from the door. You got to knock again until you fit better. Sometimes it only takes one small. Till the answer comes, you got to keep praying. Keep praying. I oh, keep praying. Till the answer comes, you got to keep praying. Keep praying till the answer comes. Now sometimes you might be on your knees for hours before the light finds breaking through the dark. But if you truly believe, His power can breathe right into the troubled heart. Till the answer.
soon, don't you? Gotta keep praying. Keep praying. Oh, keep praying. Till the answer comes. Gotta keep praying. Be praying till the answer comes. Be praying till the answer comes. Keep on praying. Pray every day. Wear those knees out. Prayer is a good thing. God wants to hear from you. And as you pray, take the time to listen. He's got something special to tell you. And it will change your life. Hey, God bless you all. Be good to each other. Forgive one another as Christ forgives you. Spend this week thinking about what Jesus has done for you. Hey, like I always say, I love you, but Jesus loves you a whole lot more. Be good now. This pastor guy saying, we'll see you next week. God bless.